Um, my name is Joe McCann. I'm the CEO of NodeSource Incorporated. We're the enterprise Node.js company. And I'll talk a little bit about um, what we do and how we've been able to help uh, the financial services sector and some of the patterns that we've recognized that have been successful as well. First, I wanted to thank um, Mozzie and the Open Fin team, our sponsors. This is an incredible venue. It's actually uh, an honor to be here to speak. It's my first time speaking in London. Uh, it's good to be back, though, so thank you. Um, I also wanted to start off talking a little bit about um, a, a personal story of mine. Um, if you read my somewhat colorful professional background, uh, I was actually a trader at one point. I worked on Wall Street about 10 years ago on a prop desk, and we were volatility chasers. We were, we were the guys that traded a stock, whether it was down or up, we didn't care why. If it was in the news, if there was pre-market activity, we traded it. <clears throat> and one of the things that enabled us to be really successful was this technique called uh, tape reading or reading the tape, right? Now, we weren't actually physically reading a tape like they were in the 1930s. We had an electronic printout. But the technique enabled us to uh, recognize patterns uh, from the order flow that were coming out. And the beauty of this is that pattern recognition itself enabled us to have better odds at success. We would see a, a pattern uh, from a stock either sort of hitting a level of support or resistance, some sort of pre-market activity that was very uh, common, and we would place our bets in that direction. And oddly enough, here I am 10 years later as a CEO of an enterprise software company, and I'm realizing that that same concept of, of pattern recognition has enabled us to really stand out as an enterprise node company, but also enable enterprises to adopt Node.js in the most effective way. So who is NodeSource? We, we are the enterprise Node company. Um, we have uh, arguably the most institutional knowledge behind Node.js, and we're the only company that actually offers a commercial version of Node. And so what does that mean, or how do we even earn the right to have something like that? Well, since we started NodeSource, we've actually been the most um, active in the community in terms of core, com core committers, core contributors, and we even have the chairperson of the Node.js project all on staff. So prior to us actually taking venture capital, we were a bootstrapped company where even at that stage, we were paying people to work on the open source project full time. And we still do that to this day. So we've kind of, we believe, earned the right to actually be in this position to even have a commercial offering because what we do is we see what has happened in the open source project relative to some of the needs in the enterprise. And we aim to bridge that gap with our product and solid, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But first, let's talk about some of these very common patterns that we see with Node.js, particularly in financial services. First up, there's this concept of a front end, back end. Now, what does that mean exactly? It's, it's somewhat counterintuitive when you see it, but it's, it's quite simple. Um, front end developers tend to operate with uh, technologies around HTML, CSS, and JavaScript primarily. It's not to say that they don't use other tech, but that's primarily what they uh, work with. The back-end teams, in a lot of cases, have difficulty keeping up with the pace of front-end developers. So what front-end developers have done is they've started to build some of their own back-end services that can communicate with some of these, call them legacy APIs, or just slower-moving services or systems to then be that service to serve up the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript assets that they need. We find folks doing this consistently as, a, as how Node sort of wedges it, its, its way into these organizations uh, and enables them to be super efficient with how they can actually start to improve their front-end experiences. Uh, in terms of mobile, we see some folks actually using Node.js almost exclusively to drive a lot of their mobile web experiences. And why is that the case? Well, in, in a lot of instances, folks actually have built their systems for a desktop-only um, presentation view. And it's difficult for them to sort of migrate to, say, an API-only um, approach for clients. So they start to use Node again with that front-end, back-end pattern to serve up their mobile clients. But what's more is they end up building actual APIs in Node for their iOS and Android and iPad clients. And they've seen huge success with this because Node is really good at managing I.O., and I'll mention this over and over again. Things that require a lot of throughput and bandwidth, Node is quite good at. There are also folks, 
particularly in financial services, that are using Node for core mission critical backend services. Um, you also, you know, uh, uh, Mozzie mentioned Uber, for example. They're not quite financial services, although they might be at some point in the future. Uh, they actually have their global dispatch system built on top of Node.js. There are folks in the financial services sector that I can't mention that are using it for also mission critical services as well. And we found that a lot of folks have just started to spin up APIs in Node.js because it's, it's so good at managing I.O. And finally, this concept of an internal platform as a service. Most folks in financial services, and certainly in you know, the US government and other sectors, but particularly financial services, they don't really get the option of using Heroku or IBM's uh, Bluemix or Google App Engine. But they still see the value in a, having a platform as a service for their IT teams and their developers for all the reasons that folks use things like Heroku and Bluemix and Google App Engine. This pattern has come up a lot where we see financial services companies actually building their own internal PaaSes completely with Node.js. So some success stories uh, with these patterns being applied specifically uh, to folks in your industry. Well, we can start first with MasterCard. Uh, this uh, came out last year at a conference called Node Interactive. They actually built a cryptography service uh, completely on top of Node.js to help handle a lot of the digital payments transactions. And you may ask yourself if, if Node really isn't geared for the enterprise or financial services, would MasterCard place a bet on something like this? And why did they? Because again, Node is really, really good at managing I.O. You could imagine the numbers of transactions that happen with digital payments. It's one of the fastest growing sectors in uh, finance at this point. They've bet big on Node because of its non-blocking I.O. model, its ability to handle lots of incoming requests. Fidelity, uh, Travell Perkins, the CTO at Fidelity, recognized very early on the value of having a platform as a service. So they built one internally at Fidelity Investments. And why did they do this? Because they had a desire to improve the experiences for their customers in a faster and more efficient way. And their way of doing it for years was no longer enabling them to be that effective, that efficient. So they built this project internally called uh, Mako, which is effectively their own internal platform as a service. And now they're able, it, it's so effective at what it does for the development teams at Fidelity that it's core to their continuous deployment uh, operations. PayPal is sort of the canonical example of, of Node.js success across so many different um, touch points, but they have quite literally redefined how they ship software at PayPal since they've adopted Node.js. They were one of the first beneficiaries to that front-end, back-end pattern, and if you've been using PayPal for almost 20 years like me, you know even a few years ago there was quite a bit left to be desired from that experience. Uh, they have drastically improved not only the experience on their web clients, but also on their mobile applications. This is completely driven by the change that's happened with Node.js. When we started working with them very early on, they had five Node.js developers, and then within about 18 months, they have over now eight, uh, 800 Node.js developers at PayPal. Finally, Intuit. They have a, a product uh, called TurboTax, and it's a 20-year-old product with a 20-year-old code base. And you could imagine that the front end team uh, was reaching peak frustration when they were trying to improve the experiences for their customers with having to manage this extremely massive legacy monolith application stack. So they started to pick at pieces of that monolith and break out these smaller services or microservices. And at, uh, lo and behold, they were ap actually able to start driving a ton of additional value to the user experience because they were starting to improve on that back end via their Node.js services. So what is the most compelling reason to adopt Node? We get this question a lot. And I think in a word it's agility, but without actually sacrificing security. Certainly, financial services is focused on security. I've seen the budgets for CISOs. I, I know that there is uh, a lot of interest in making sure that things are consistently secure. At NodeSource, we are uh, paramount in making sure that the open source project is, in fact, secure. We actually issue the releases. We issue the patches. 
So anytime someone downloads the Node.js binary, that's coming from us. But we've also noticed that for the enterprise, and specifically financial services, there's a lot that's left to be desired in terms of control over the runtime, secure memory allocations, things that frankly will never land in Node Core, and we know this because we are arguably very influential in the project, we put into a product called NSolid. And this is our enterprise-grade Node.js platform. It offers a lot of the enhancements that many folks are accustomed to, particularly on the operations side of the business, that flat out don't exist currently in the Node.js ecosystem. We have a ton of additional security capabilities that are unavailable in the open source project. And you may be asking yourself, but wait a second, weren't you just telling me that you guys work on the open source project a lot? Absolutely, our default is to actually land these patches or these features in the open source project. But in a lot of cases, it doesn't make sense for Node Core. Yet there's this gap that needs to be filled and we've been filling that gap with this product, NSolid. NSolid provides you with secure memory allocations when you create buffers in Node. It provides you with the ability to, say, restrict access to the file system in production. There are a number of challenges just from debugging Node.js applications that we have fixed in a turnkey fashion. So for example, if you want to profile a Node.js process right now, you have to require in a module, you have to modify and instrument your code, you have to hopefully cap capture what happened in a production environment and potentially recreate that and then actually profile the app and then open it up in the Chrome Dev Tools to generate a flame graph, et cetera, et cetera. I think I've already lost half the audience. This is a pain in the butt. <laughs> we have fixed this by enabling you to press a button and generate a flame graph. We've actually added threshold monitoring capabilities to say when this process is leaking memory up to 80% of its available memory, trigger a notification to us, take a snapshot of that so that we have the forensic evidence to debug and profile that, that issue sooner. We are driving down time to resolution. We're not telling you we're gonna fix your applications, but we're gonna help you drive time to resolution faster. And on the security front, we have real-time security vulnerability scanning. We enable you to see what packages may in fact be, uh, uh, have known security vulnerabilities. You know, if you use the NPM ecosystem right now, when you pull in these modules for your Node.js applications, you know, the modules are these tiny little bits of code, who's to say that it's secure or not? With the NSolid platform, we will tell you in real time whether or not you are shipping or running in production uh, applications that have known security vulnerabilities. We are the only vendor that will actually also offer you 24-7, 365 days of support. We have a globally distributed team. We do not restrict our talent to Silicon Valley. We have folks literally around the globe because the best Node.js developers are actually around the globe and then most of them work at node source. And the other thing I want to make very clear here is that we don't lock you in. We are huge proponents of the open source project. We actually encourage people to use the open source project. The reality is, is that there's a lot of value in the platform that we've created because of the patterns that we've seen in the enterprise and specifically for financial services. The best part about NSolid is, is that if you have a Node.js application, you can drop it in right now and it works. If you don't get value out of it, take it out, put Node back in. We believe that you'll find value in it and then we can have a discussion later, but it's actually free. You can download it for free and try it and get an idea of, wow, th this is actually helping drive down resolution time on our bugs that we have in our Node.js apps or the enhanced security capabilities are actually worth paying for. If you don't see the value in it, no worries. We think that the open source project is thriving right now and we're contributing actively to that, but we wanna also serve the enterprise needs and folks like you in financial services. Thank you.